estate or crypto? All things considered, which one is the best form of passive income? My name is Crypto Noah, and in this video, we're going to be looking at yield farming and real estate passive income side by side with everything that goes along with it. Obviously, it'll be different if you're a high net worth individual or you're just someone starting out with, with a small amount of capital. But either way, if you're considering, oh, should I dive into real estate? Should I dive into yield farming if I want passive income? This video is going to break it down. So before we get started, I do have to say none of this is financial advice. Consult a financial advisor before making any investment decisions. These are my own perspectives, research, and opinions, and should be treated as such. All right, so without further ado, let's jump straight into the video. All right, guys, so I made this chart with all the factors that I could think about uh, that goes into real estate and yield farming, like all the things you have to consider. If it has green, that means it is the highest in that category, meaning good. If it's low, that means it's the lowest in that category, which means not so good. And obviously, like I said, this depends on if, how much capital you have, the connections you have, but this is just to give you an idea if you were thinking about it. So the first thing we're gonna start with is barriers to entry. So for real estate, the barrier to entry is low. In yield farming, the barrier to entry is high, meaning it's easy to get in. So start with real estate, let's elaborate. Okay guys, I almost forgot. Before I even jump into this, I have to explain what yield farming is. So it's multiple ways to get a yield uh, in crypto. You can stake your tokens um, on any blockchain staking contract to secure the network. So for ETH, that's the ETH 2.0 so beacon chain. You can use your funds as liquidity to facilitate borrowing and lending on platforms such as Aave and Compound. You can use your funds to facilitate insurance premiums uh, on a platform such as like Nexus Mutual or in the way that we're talking about, you can use your funds as liquidity on decentralized exchanges and you can be a market maker. So for example, if you want to make passive income in ETH USDC, you can deposit your Ethereum and USDC tokens into an ETH USDC pool. Anytime people are trading back and forth, you're making passive income in regards to the volume to TVO ratio and the amount of liquidity you have in the pool. All right. And when it comes to real estate, we're talking about cash flow from rental property. So it can either be a residential property or it can be a multifamily apartment or you know, property. We're not talking about buying and selling or fix and flips or anything like that. We're talking about strictly cash flow. All right, so barrier to entry. So real estate, the barrier to entry, we have it red and low because the barrier to entry is really high. You have to first purchase the home, which involves a lot of paperwork, right? You have to have good credit. You probably have to know someone. You have to drive around and find a good property, and it takes a while, right? I know people who are buying homes and I'm not, I've never bought a home, so I don't know if it's dependent on if you get a mortgage, but they can't buy anything because the banks is looking into their stuff. So what if they find another investment opportunity? They can't even pounce on it. However, yield farming is green because it doesn't matter who you are or where you are at in the world. It doesn't matter how much money you have. It doesn't matter your credit, your criminal history. You can start with a couple bucks. You can start with millions of dollars. You can go on a decentralized exchange quickly, assuming you know what you're doing, get into a pool and start making passive income immediately like within 30 minutes from start to finish like not having a crypto wallet to provide liquidity 30 minutes to an hour depending on who you are all right now let's look at the time frame okay so for real estate we have the time frame as low and for yield farming we have it on here as high let's elaborate so with real estate it usually takes a while to find the home that you want to buy uh, then you have to compete with other buyers right we've all heard the stories about you know rich investors getting into their limousine or getting into their planes flying or driving around neighborhoods and essentially going shopping like you would in a retail store but even those guys have competition right so after you find the house you want to buy it takes a while to close on the home because of all the middlemen that have to get involved then it can take a while to find a tenant if you do it on your own and it still could take some time if you have a property manager to do it for you okay However, yield farming marks high on the time frame section because assuming you know what you're doing, if you're in our group, we have a yield hunter tool that literally shows you how to find the best pools in DeFi in real time, almost in less than five seconds. And if you guys are interested in getting access to our tool, learn how to deploy these market making strategies that have been successful since the 19th century, make passive income at a rapid clip before the bull market with an elite group of coaches and an elite group of members, Click the link in the description, book a free strategy session. You'll talk to me or one of our coaches. We'll answer any questions you have on yield farming and crypto and ultimately see if our program is a good fit for you. If it's not, we're happy to point you in the right direction. I digress. With yield farming, you can hop into a pool really, really fast if you know what you're doing. 
After you find the pool, you just select your range. You can enter immediately. You can manage on your own versus having to pay a third party to do so. Although there are concentrated liquidity vaults, most of which, or I would even say all of which, I've made videos on where you can literally click one button and make passive income immediately, but they do take a fee. But it's not that hard to learn. Our course goes through everything. So yield farming wins in this category. Okay, so now let's dive into repair costs. So real estate, we have this as low. And for yield farming, we have this as high. Let's elaborate. So when it comes to real estate, whether it's residential or multifamily, you're dealing with tenants. So you may have to pay to fix things. Someone might get mad and throw somebody through a wall or shit on a doorknob. You never know. And even if nothing's broken, you're still going to have to pay to clean, to repaint for just, you know, overall wear and tear, right? Now, when it comes to yield farming, there is no maintenance cost. You're not going to have to pay to fix anything. If there's a problem on a website, they'll fix it. Like you, there is no kinds of repair costs when it comes to earning passive income. Like you don't have to fork up a lot of things to fix your pools. Like you have to fix a house or clean a house or anything in that regard, you know, cut the grass, you know, cut down trees, all those things. Yo Farming has none of that. You literally hop into a pool, you're making money immediately. Sometimes multiple percentages per day, depending on the volume to TVL ratio in that pool. But like I said, we teach you how to analyze all of that within our paid community. All right, the next one is collateral use. Like what is the availability and liquidity that will enable you to borrow against your real estate and borrow against your yield farming positions? For real estate, we have this as high. For yield farming, we have this as low. Let's elaborate. Okay, so when it comes to real estate, you can borrow against the equity you have in the home to use the funds for whatever. And if you didn't know, you don't pay taxes on borrowed funds. You can borrow against land. And this was, this is like the foundation of capitalism. We made a video on this, you know, reviewing the book, Mystery of Capital. The ownership of land is what kind of ignited this capitalism society, because once you can prove you own your land, then you can use it as collateral to borrow against it because it's in an integrated property system where there's consequences that it can be taken away if it isn't paid, right? And this is why third world countries are poor because their property system is very, very poor. So being able to prove you own something, whether it's land, real estate, crypto, bonds, you know, whatever, you can use it as collateral. And real estate is high on this category because here, especially here in the US, if you're somewhere else, it's different. Like if you're in Peru or something, it will be low. But assuming you're in the United States, it's really, really high. It's really, really easy to borrow against your home, especially if you own it, okay? Now, with yield farming, you can borrow against your position, but it's new, it's more risky, and it's not a lot of liquidity. Like if you're a will, like I did a video on a protocol called Yielder, where you can you know, borrow against your yield farming position. But if it's not a lot of liquidity on there, which it, you know, it isn't, it doesn't help, right? You can go to any bank and borrow against your real estate and get a loan but you can't do that with yield farming, at least not yet. Now in TradFi market making, that might be a different story, but for yield farming right now, there are a place where you can do it a little bit. Maybe I should have made it moderate on the chart, but if everyone who was yield farming wanted to borrow against their pools, they wouldn't be able to. If everyone wanted to borrow against their home, way more people would be able to do it. All right, so the next one is cash flow stability, right? And this is the only one where real estate and yield farming ranked really high all right and when i say cash flow stability i mean you know is it worth it is the cash flow stable on a month to month day to day year by year basis let's elaborate all right so when it comes to real estate you know you're getting cash flows from tenants you do have to worry about rent control which means that even though the demand may increase in the area where you have your property you can't take advantage of it which in a way capture cash flow but let's say demand decreases, it also protects you on the downside. So, you know, it kind of balances itself out. You know, once you get a tenant, you normally lock people in for a six month to one year lease. People always need a place to stay. So paying rent is usually people's first priority, paying rent and paying their cars, right? Now, if they move out, it could take your property manager some time to find another tenant, which decreases your cash flow. But like I said, people always need a place to live. And with rent control, as long as you take care of your property, you know, I'm no real estate expert or anything like that, but it shouldn't be too hard, especially if you're in a desired area. Like this has a lot of different modalities. I'm being very, very general in this video. Now with yield farming, you're getting paid passive income in real time as long as your position is in range, 
right? Concentrated liquidity allows you to set your range that you want to provide your liquidity in, which rewards efficient liquidity providers. So if you think Ethereum is going to trade between the price of 2500 and 4K, you can make that your range. As long as prices are within that range, you're making passive income depending on the volume to TVO ratio. The wider your range, the lower your passive income, but the lower your risk because it's a higher likelihood that it'll stay in range. And the opposite when you have a tight range, the higher your passive income and the higher your risk. But this is why we teach people to set up tranches where you have some tight range, some wide range. So that way you're covered. You're making passive income at a high clip. If it goes out of range, at least you're still within your wide range. And if volume increases, you directly benefit because it results in you filling more orders, which means you're making more passive income. Time in the market versus trying to time the market. We say this all the time. Also, if the pool goes out of range, you can rebalance and find a better pool in less than two minutes, assuming you know what you're doing like we teach, and then you're right back to generating passive income. And given that institutional capital isn't allowed in yet, I think this is the best passive income opportunity in history for the layman. So I would give this one a bright green, and I would give real estate maybe a, a more moderate or darker green. All right, now the next one is saturation. And this is also the only category where I mark real estate and yield farming as moderate, right? And when I say saturation, like how likely is it that, hey, I'm making good passive income for my rental property or for my liquidity pool one second, next second I got all this competition and my passive income or my yields kind of decrease. Let's elaborate. So with real estate, it's possible that someone can put up a house next to yours and now that creates competition, but this isn't black and white because it could increase your cash flow because if there's neighborhoods going up, that's also gonna attract businesses and schools and hospitals and things like that, which actually increase the value of your home. But let's say a dump gets built next to your home or something that's not desirable. Like there's all kinds of things that can get built that can happen around your property that can make it make the value of it go up or the desire to live there go up or go down, right? It's all sorts of factors, but there's only so much land, right? So that's why I put this at moderate because it's a lot of things that can happen. You can find a situation where it doesn't get saturated for years, maybe even decades and centuries, but you can also find a situation where you're making good money for a few years and then it gets saturated, right? So many factors. Yield farming, kind of the same thing. It's a higher risk of saturation. Like if you're a large will, it's harder for you to get a good yield on all your money because it isn't as much liquidity in DeFi. Like if you're a billionaire, but if you're a layman, it's harder to get saturated. So that's why I gave it a moderate because it's, it kind of depends on who you are, right? Like you can be in a good pool. Like right now, like I said, mainstream banks and institutions aren't legally allowed to provide liquidity in DeFi. So you can get triple digit yields easily with a fairly wide range on an ETH USDC pool. Once institutions are granted the regulatory green light, that's probably going to be the first pool they hop into. And then the yield's going to be saturated for everyday people like you and I. But there will always be other pools that they won't hop into. You know, for example, maybe Maple ETH or other volatile, volatile pools, you know, newer altcoins, coins that just did an airdrop where it won't check their box on the risk category. It'll be too risky for them to hop in. And it's not that it's super risky, but it's just too risky for them. So there will always be opportunities, but eventually certain pools will be saturated. I do believe that. But like I said, on the bright side, if you know what you're doing, it's always easy to find another pool and start making passive income immediately. All right. The next category is risk of loss. How likely is it that you can lose your fund or something gets swept under you to where you lose your house, use your yield firm position or anything like that? Talking about risk of loss on this one. For real estate, I have it high because it's not as likely. For yield firm, I have it as moderate. Let's elaborate. So when it comes to real estate, assuming you own your home clean, assuming there isn't any liens or holes on your property, your only worry is you know, people coming by and just breaking your windows for no reason or something, uh, or like natural disasters. And the level of pot potential severity varies de depending on your location. If you're in like Oklahoma, you are higher risk for a tornado. If you're in Florida, higher risk for a hurricane. You know, if you're on the San Andreas Fault, it could be a higher risk for an earthquake. It, it really depends on where you're at. You know, someone can set your house on, house on fire. But chances are that if you do lose some value in your home, it likely won't be that by that much because the real estate market isn't that volatile, right? And even though the value of the home may go up and down, 
the rent will most likely be the same because of rent control. And there's homeowners ins insurance that allows you to get a payout to fix your home if some kind of disaster strikes. You can put your home in a trust, like it's, it's a lot of things to do to protect your real estate. Now with yield farming, protocols can get hacked, although we always preach to provide liquidity on battle-tested decentralized exchanges such as Uniswap, right? And then there's impermanent loss, but you know the strategies that I like to deploy, the more impermanent loss that I experience, the more I win, right? And it doesn't matter as much if you think long-term because you can have impermanent loss, but you're still accumulating, accumulating, and you get to the point where you've accumulated so much that you're playing with house money. And if you think about it, real estate has impermanent loss too, right? Impermanent loss just means it, the loss is impermanent until you sell. So you can buy a home, get cash flow on it. Let's say you bought it at 400K, the real estate market can drop. Now your home's, you know, 350K, 300K, and now you sell it at a lower price than where you bought it, you experience impermanent loss. I don't know how likely that is, but it is possible. And that's why I put moderate. All right, last but not least, let's go over long-term stability. How likely is it that you'll be able to get passive income long-term on real estate versus yield farming? For real estate, I have it as high. For yield farming, I have it as moderate. Let's elaborate. So real estate and land, like I said, are the oldest assets, right? And if land is gone, the world's probably gone because land is all we got. It is the surface of the earth where we build on top of. Right. So there is real estate that's been passed along through generations being held by trust and LLCs. So if you do it, if you play your cards right, it's not hard to have a diversified real estate portfolio and pass it along and have it generating income, especially if it's in a desirable living environment, generating passive income for centuries. Right. And that's why I give it high yield farming. I have it as moderate because Market making is not new in traditional finance, but it's new in crypto. I do believe it's here to stay, right? But I don't know in what capacity. We don't know how regulation is gonna shake out. What if they make market making illegal for retail investors? You know, what if you have to have some kind of license or something? I doubt that they're gonna do that. I hope they don't do that. I can't even say I doubt it. But that's why we're trying to yield farm as much as possible and take advantage of this opportunity while it still exists in this capacity. We don't know what's gonna happen, but there's a higher likelihood that the laws around real estate are gonna stay the same versus the laws around crypto and specifically DeFi or decentralized finance, which is the category yield farming falls under. So to conclude, in my opinion, crypto is a great asset class to educate yourself on and get into as the returns are asymmetrical. It's the smallest major asset class in the world right now, and our lives are becoming increasingly digital. And as time goes along, people who invest into crypto now, the right way that is, you'll get to ride it going from a $2 trillion market cap to a 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 trillion dollar market cap with the likes of real estate, stocks, bonds, gold, you know, precious metals, and things like that. Now, while real estate is a higher barrier to entry, I think it'll be a good idea to make money in crypto and then use real estate and bonds and these other safer investments to hold your wealth. Use crypto to grow your wealth. Once it's grown, put it in something like real estate, bonds, you know, dividend paying stocks, depending on the time. Obviously, I'm being general here um, to maintain your wealth, right? Gold, things like that. Like they say, it's harder to maintain than it is to get. That's the route that people usually take. They start buying commodities. They start buying real estate just to save their money long term. Like once you get to a certain amount of capital, it's harder to get a 20X on your portfolio, a 40X, 50X. At that point, you wanna just maintain what you have and have small amounts of growth because a 10% jump on $1,000 is only 100 bucks, but a 10% growth on a billion dollars is $100 million, so it's a big difference. So with that, I'd like to conclude this video. If you got value, I ask that you drop a like, drop a comment, subscribe, share with a friend who's in real estate, who's in yield farming, or someone who's interested in both, but they're trying to figure it out. But with that, I thank you guys so much for tuning in. I love every single one of you watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care and trade safe.